Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at RAF Fairford, Royal Air Force Base, about 90 miles outside London, uh, and home to the Royal International Air Tattoo, which is one of the world's largest gatherings of military leaders, companies that serve them, as well as aircraft from all around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. We're over here at the uh, Textron uh, Chalet uh, to talk to Chuck Gummo, who is uh, Vice President for uh, Business Development, uh, a, a company uh, focusing on uh, airplanes like uh, the AT-6 and the, and, and the T-6, as well as uh, training systems at, uh, at Textron Aviation. And Bill. <laughs> what? The, uh, that was an F-35 that just went by, and you know it's an F-35 because you shake from the inside out when the airplane goes over. And, and Bill Harris, who's the vice president uh, for on the Scorpion program, uh, and, and both of you guys have been very active, so I want to start with you, Bill. Um, last uh, 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 two Riots, you guys had the Scorpion jet here. Um, obviously an aircraft you guys developed on your own nickel for uh, the international market. Uh, you guys have been uh, bringing it to customers around the world. Uh, just want to find out what an update on the program is because there always appears that there's going to be a, an announcement right around the corner. So I'm going to ask you again whether or not there's a... Uh, and that's a P-51 Mustang, by the way. So this is a dynamic duo uh, heritage flight that uh, the, the Air Force uh, does. Talk to us a little bit about where you guys are on the program, what are you guys doing, what's the growth, because you guys continually adapt and evolve new capabilities, whether on the munitions side or on the system side, as you guys are looking for that customer for what could be a breakthrough aircraft. Sure, thanks Vago. Yeah, it's been a real interesting uh, uh, year this year. What we've decided to do is to focus more on development of the aircraft with uh, different systems, to keep uh, the aircraft in front of the, uh, the leaders of the Air Force, uh, and to go out and look and talk to all our uh, international customers that are out there to keep it active in their minds. Uh, but rather than go out and demo the aircraft, we're keeping the aircraft back in the U.S. and working with several organizations on development work, uh, different types of tests that, uh, to help develop and uh, increase the capabilities of the airplane. The other thing that we also need to realize is that we're, uh, the company's very focused on uh, LAE-2 that just uh, finished up here just recently with the AT-6. So as any company does, we need to go where the uh, immediate need is, and, and right now we're focused a lot on that. Not that the Scorpion uh, is not uh, in, the work, in the front of our mind and, and working every day, because it is. Um, and uh, from, a, from a sales perspective, should we expect to see papal smoke anytime soon? Well, we sure hope so, but uh, I wouldn't say we're going to sign anything here at Riyadh, but we are talking to several uh, customers, both uh, in the U.S., uh, with the U.S. Air Force, as well as outside the U.S., so no, we don't have a big announcement right now. <laughs> well, we're, we're counting on it, because uh, folks are rooting for uh, any company that's got its own skin in the game to actually uh, build an airplane from scratch in order to sort of scratch a global itch for combined reconnaissance as well as strike airplane. Chuck, let's talk a little bit uh, about the AT-6 uh, or T-6 program, AT-6 program, where we have the lovely uh, Wolverine behind us. The Air Force's OAX program continues uh, to go, you guys, uh, the Beechcraft uh, aircraft, but as well as Sierra Nevada's uh, with the Embraer uh, Super Tucano made it into that last cut. Bring us up to speed just overall on that effort before we get specific here in the UK and, and European markets. Well, thank you. We just uh, finished our uh, our second LAE experimentation with the U.S. Air Force. Went extremely well. We were looking at over 98% availability on the aircraft. The targeting systems were uh, perfect, flawlessly. We delivered a lot of ordnance on time, on target. And we're really happy with the way that the uh, aircraft performed and performed with the uh, U.S. Air Force and Navy pilots that were, were flying in the, uh, uh, in the aircraft. So with that program, we're looking forward to moving forward with the uh, U.S. Air Force. Um, we hope there will be a competition in the near future, and we believe that we're in a very good position, uh, not only for the U.S. Air Force, but globally with this, with, with this program. Um, and I should say, full disclosure, uh, Bell, a Textron company, sponsors our Defense and Aerospace Business Report weekly podcast, which you can check out on our website as well as uh, on, on iTunes uh, and other podcast uh, platforms. Um, you know, in this dynamic race, you know, everybody's sort of looking at what are the relative capabilities, you know, what, are the, what, are, what does the Super Tucano and the Sierra Nevada team bring, uh, what do you guys bring? From your standpoint, what's, what's the great strength of the airplane that you guys are bringing and, and the system you guys are bringing uh, to, this, to, the, to the problem? Well, I think it's uh, not only cost, but uh, availability. There's a 
Um, there's parts and history with the legacy of uh, the T6 plat platform. Um, we bring a lot of experience. We bring a lot of uh, engineering know-how, a lot of, lot of uh, corporate uh, sponsoring behind this program. We really are stand behind this program. We believe that it's really going to be beneficial not only for the Air Force, but a lot of our uh, global partners. Um, you know, let me let me just go back to you, Bill, for one second, because sure. folks have a tendency of sort of seeing the Airland program, which started outside Textron, then moved in uh, into the company, and and then was champion. Talk to us about sort of the relationship you have within Textron in terms of the push pull of ideas and technologies from the rest of the Textron, uh, not Textron companies, but also particularly within uh, the the aviation unit. Yeah. Well, well, within aviation, we draw from uh, not only what we know on the traditional Cessna side with the Citation line, but also on the Hawker line on the Beechcraft side. Uh, also, if you look at the, the ongoing factory uh, that we have right now with the uh, T-6 still being an active production and the logistical support that we have around the world for that aircraft, it just goes hand in hand with everything that we've done uh, to get ready for the Scorpion to go out there for that first launch customer. So from how we support our jets on the business side to how we support our jets and, uh, and turboprops on the military side, uh, they just go hand in hand. Uh, uh, we're a large company that supports aircraft all around the world uh, and at very high reliability rates. Uh, so let's get to the UK customer, uh, largest customer, l largest defense uh, power uh, and budget in, in Europe. Very robust uh, acquisition, a lot of cutting edge technology and cutting edge ideas that the UK, uh, and I should mention, uh, Chuck's wearing his handsome Royal Aeronautics Society uh, tie and, and the lovely RAF 100 uh, uh, appeal pin. For those of you, um, this is the 100th anniversary of the world's first independent air force, the Royal Air Force, uh, and the appeal is to uh, for RAF charities as RIOT is uh, the RAF Charitable uh, Trust, which does education programs and supports uh, Royal Air Force uh, airmen and their families worldwide. So talk to us a little bit on the UK market. You know, there's a, an organic training system, there's a, a, a training service, and this is 16. It shakes you, it just doesn't shake you as much as the 35 does. So tell us a little bit on uh, you know, what's happening in the training space that you guys are getting involved in because Textron Airborne Systems is involved in a competition here as well. Walk us through the dynamic here of how the RAF continues to evolve its training architecture. Well, we're proud to be part of their uh, UK MFTS program, um, which uh, we're providing 10 uh, T6 uh, Charlies to the RAF for training. We've delivered uh, the first uh, three aircraft. We've also provided training of their instructor pilots back at Wichita, and we're currently training their maintainers to, to work on the aircraft. Uh, we'll deliver the, all 10 aircraft this year, um, and they'll begin training in January. And we're really excited to be part of their team and support the RAF. This is going to be a great platform for their basic uh, pilots all the way to inter all the way through intermediate. We have uh, approximately 1,000 T-6 Charlies out in the uh, world right now. Uh, the U.S. Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, if you're getting your wings today, you're flying a T-6 uh, aircraft. Our global partners across the, the world, over three million hours on T-6s. We're very proud to be part of all those communities. And where are those uh, aircraft going to be based? At Valley. So they're Okay, that's right. They're going to be uh, at Valley, and uh, we're excited. We uh, hope that uh, we'll expand our footprint here a little bit more with a couple more aircraft. So we're in the process of uh, working with the UK MOD. Um, but right now, we're concentrating on making sure that everything that they need to begin their training in January that they have, and it's working out on time and uh, under budget. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody's going to be happy that you made that plug, uh, Chuck. Um, so talk to us a little bit about on training services. UK has always been a leader in outsourcing some capability, looking at folks who uh, bring some training services into the picture. Talk to us a little bit about how the RAF is looking at that and how you guys are working to sort of address that piece of the equation as well. Well, the UK is working with uh, contractors, uh, Ascent and Affinity, and we actually provide the aircraft to Ascent to Affinity, and they provide those training services. So we support Affinity and Ascent, but our, really our end customer is the RAF. This is a new model for a lot of countries where uh, they want to buy, buy, buy training by the pound, by the hour, and uh, we can do it uh, direct commercial sale, we can do it 
as services, we can do it FMS. So we're prepared to do it um, however a country decides that they want to do their acquisition uh, strategy. Um, let me ask uh, one last uh, question. I, I don't mean to make it sound political, but you know there is concern among um, U.S. folks, but as well as uh, our some of our allies about some of the language, the idea of a transatlantic trade war. Um, you know, Germans have taken some of the comments the president have made uh, personally, uh, as well as Canadians that you hear from. And there's a sense that you hear from some of our European friends that this is a, an opportunity that maybe um, you know, U.S. products may, may end up being less appealing than European solutions. From your guys' standpoint, you know, you're on the front edge, you're talking to customers all the time. Uh, you know, Europe, Europe is, is your patch, but you're going worldwide in terms of uh, looking for opportunities from Scorpion. Have you, have you heard any feedback, any pushback at all, or do you guys still feel the door is uh, open for you guys? Uh, I believe the door is open. We have a lot of close relationships for many, many years, and I have not heard any feedback like that at all. I mean, matter of fact, I think it's more open now than ever before. And I, I agree uh, with Bill. I think that we still have those close personal bonds, and uh, I think uh, we will continue to have those close personal bonds. I haven't heard anything negative uh, at this show, and I don't expect anything negative in at Farmborough next week. Especially where especially wearing that tie, Chuck, you, you look almost British until you open your mouth. I mean, and then it just, it just works. Bill Harris, Chuck Gummo, uh, best of luck to you guys from Textron Aviation. Really, really appreciate it. Best of luck. Appreciate Thank you. It. Appreciate it. Thank you.